welcome to the sixth and final episodes of Porti Zurich's Portugal podcast. My name is Joana Cruz and today we have a very special guest with us uh, sharing her vision on the importance of uh, mental well-being. Please welcome Ellen Westerlin, CEO of Zurich Portugal. Did I say it right? Yes, you did. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome. It's Thank such you. a pleasure, pleasure to meet you. And I would like to start uh, for asking you to tell us a little bit about the importance of the, the well-being. What, what does it mean for you? I think that uh, well-being and especially mental well-being is a combination of, of pieces to a puzzle which is called life. And mental well-being is not in itself, in isolation, something that, that happens, but it is something that is influenced by, by other parts. So be it physical well-being, be it financial well-being, be it social well-being. And I think that when it all comes together, it is how we feel and how we are as people with our mental well-being. So For me, it is about how all of these things comes together and how we manage those aspects in our lives as we continue facing difficulties or challenges or situations mm -hmm. going forward. So it would be for you like a, a, a holistic view of yes. a well-being. You cannot separate uh, all. I think that mental well-being is based on, on something. It can be a, a financial stress. It can be... Uh, social relationships that are not uh, fruitful. It can be physical uh, impairment or, or physical pain that you are in that is haunting you and is, is pu positioning you mentally in a, in a situation where you are challenged. Mm -hmm. uh, so as a CEO of Zurich Portugal, uh, what strategies do you use in your daily uh, life to maintain uh, a mentally balanced life? I think that uh, not only as a, as a CEO, but, but also as a, as a mother and as a wife and as a friend and a daughter and a sister, I think it's important to find that balance throughout the days and the weeks and the years that, that you have. And, and for me, it's been very important to anchor it in two very important pieces. One is having a, a balanced diet. I think that uh, we underestimate the importance of what we eat and the things that, uh, that we consume. Yeah, we forget that we are what we eat, right? Exactly, exactly. And, and, and it's not a cliche that fruit and, and vegetables and whole grains are much, much better for you than processed food and sugar. And it, 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 we, we hear it a lot, but I think we underestimate the, the importance of, of a healthy diet. And how do you adjust? Like the Swedish diet would be different from your Portuguese diet? Did you have to adjust that much? No, I think that uh, both in Sweden and, uh, and in Portugal, we eat a lot of fish, uh, a lot of omega-3, omega a lot of vegetables, uh, a lot of fruit. Uh, so I think that we are similar in, in our diets. Then we, of course, both have our batata fritas and <laughs> we, we have our crisps and we have our candies and our sobremesas. Um, but it's about, the, again, having a balanced, a balanced diet. So for me, it's very important that I have a balanced diet, but I also... I have my pastel natas and uh, these, God. yeah. So it's uh, it's life still, right? So I think this is very important. The other thing is is about physical activity, and uh, this is also very very important for me. It's uh, I'm not uh, a marathon runner. I'm I'm not a, a high level athlete at all. But having this consistent physical activity be it 20 minutes, be it half an hour, be it a walk, be it on, uh, on the, in the gym, lifting weights, but constantly doing something to release the endorphins that you have and, and, and also use that. For me, that has been very important to use that as a, as a way of releasing stress or, or, or some type of anxiety or situations that I've been in. So those are the, the two that I, I really try to hold myself Uh, accountable to yeah. and to get to know you, uh, to get to know you a little bit better uh, would you prefer a gym workout or outside workout how is your exercise routine so when the sun is shining i go for power walks 
and um, I have these Nordic sticks, mm -hmm. which I've realized is not very common in Portugal. Yeah. So I get a lot of looks when I go with my sticks, which looks like skiing sticks. Mm -hmm. and, and, and some joke with me then say, we don't have snow here, Helen. So, <laughs> but it's called Nordic walking. Uh, so I do that. Uh, but then if the weather is bad, then I do, then I do weights mm -hmm. and I do indoor yeah, exercises. Well, as time goes by, it's, it's really important for, yes. for us to do. Yes. So, um, and your balanced, mentally balanced lifestyle, so would include good food, uh, exercise, and I would say family and friends also. Absolutely. An important Absolutely. It's, a, it's a very important aspect to have strong uh, relationships, family relationship, friends relationships, that social aspect is is very important to be able to have people that you that you trust that you can talk to that you can get their aspects and their thoughts around situations that that you are facing okay and how would you see the role of uh, leaders in promoting mental well mental well-being i think that um being uh, being a leader this is absolutely vital at, at the end of the day we are a people's business it's people that makes our business run and how they feel and where they are from a mental well-being perspective is fundamental to how we then interact with each other how we interact with our customers how we position new ideas our innovation our creativity and and it's clear that people that feel better at work, that has a good mental well-being uh, positioning, also uh, prov provides better productivity and, and more innovation and, and creativity and builds stronger relationships. So I think that for, for leaders and for organizations, this is a fundamental piece to the puzzle to make sure that people feel at their best and feel safe in the environment that they're in. Okay, and would you say like uh, here in Portugal, do you see there's still a path? To yes, I, I think that I think that the situation with mental well-being has always been there. I think the difference is that a couple of years ago, with with COVID, we started to talk about it much more. We started to make it legit to talk about and express because we were all in a situation where we were. Um, having anxiety, where we weren't able to meet with our loved ones, where we were isolated. And, and I think that created a, a catalyst for actually opening up to have these type of conversations and take the stigma away. Um, and this is now continuing. And we are more and more being open to having these type of conversations of how important it is to be balanced in your mindset. And that you are not by yourself alone to manage this situation. As family and friends and as, as employers and as colleagues, we all have a responsibility to make life a little bit easier step by step mm -hmm. together. So I definitely think that this will, this will continue. Mm -hmm. I think for the good, it will continue. We will be more transparent in our conversations and we will be more open in sharing the challenges that we face, because we all face yeah. challenges. It's, it's not up to one person that, that faces it all. We all go through it. Yeah, and absolutely. So as CEO of Zurich Portugal, uh, you certainly face some stressful moments. How would you, how do you usually deal with the, the, that kind of situations? How do you maintain your mental health and you try to balance things? Because I, I would, uh, I can imagine that uh, you have lots of responsibilities, so how do you manage? Do you have any tips that you would like to share with us? I think that um, as I have evolved in my, in my career, I have become better at, at managing stress. I mean, a certain level of stress is always good. Uh, it makes you focus, it makes you think more structured. So a level of stress is always good. It, the, the problem is when, when there's too much stress and things starts to pile on top of, of each other and it moves into you being distressful instead. And then finding your way back to how do I now land in this? How do I think about this in a focused and a structured way? Uh, for me, one of the things that I always go back to is uh, really making sure that I reflect 
over the situation. I'm, I'm a very reflective person. I think about the situation, I go back and I analyze how could we do it, how can we do it differently. Uh, I talk to people to get their insights on the situation, to learn from others that have might, might have experienced the same type of, of situation and how they uh, experienced it and what would be the do's and the don'ts that, that they would guide me with. Um, I think also I'm one of those people and it's something that we have ingrained in our family for a, for a long time. We call it FOP, so focus on the positive. Um, and, and as we face things as a, as a family or, or in our relationship, we always think about, okay, how can we focus on the positive here? There's always There's something good. Always about something that. that we can focus on to, to look at what is the positive or how can we make this positive? How can we solve this situation? And I think that is also one of the, the pieces that I, that I try to think about. Like, how do I reflect and what are the, FOPs. What is what is the positives that can come out of this? How can we learn from it? How can we grow from it? And how can we move on from it? Did you learn that with experience, or do you have any guru uh, that you uh, aim to 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 reach, or uh, any any reference uh, in your life that you? I think I've I've met with with many fantastic people and leaders throughout throughout my career. I think when I started uh, the last 15 years, I've been in, in more executive roles. At that time, 15 years ago, it was not so open to talk about challenges. Uh, leaders were supposed to be very tough and, and, and have distance. And they were somehow, you know, they felt sometimes that they had a shield uh, in front of them. And they, they were managing situations quite structured and quite formal. Um, I never really uh, linked into that as I as I started my my journey. And I was always um, not challenged, but I was always questioned why I was showing so much empathy and why I was listening so much and why I was sharing so much. Mm -hmm. But it was a way for me to build uh, build relationships uh, with people. I think then throughout my career, it was important to to reflect. And, and I, I was very open to reflect. And I was lucky to, to have people around me that let me brainstorm ideas and, and thoughts without having any prejudice or any perceptions, but really just letting me talk and, and giving me some feedback and, and being my sparring partner. And it was like uh, being um, bringing to a, a most... The, the corporate we could we could say that it's like a more masculine world and you have that feminine side that has no no harm on being shown and, yes yes and, and, and i so think nice. that you know we're all people at the end of the day and i think this is what is so important when we talk about mental well-being we all face face challenges as we go through life we all men do and it women. Yeah, men and course. women mm -hmm. old and young everyone yeah. in between uh, and showing vulnerability and showing that you care, I think is important because people can relate to you. And, and, and lucky for me, I cannot do it in another way. So in the beginning of my career, I sometimes got a bit challenged about the fact that I yeah. did show vulnerability and, and that I did show passion and that I did get engaged in things. But I said I cannot do it in another way because I care. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the way how I show that I truly care. Perfect. Is this awareness uh, around mental well-being uh, a trend that you would say it's here to stay? Or would you, like, would you think that it would be a fleeting uh, trend that it will eventually lose some importance? Or at least I, I, I can understand that you're trying to make it uh, a thing to stay, right? Yeah, I think it definitely will will stay. Um, I think in every every research we we look at, um, every analysis we we engage in, we see that this is a topic. One out of seven young people suffers from mental well being or mental disorders. Uh, we saw that it doubled after after COVID in, in Portugal. The, the depression and anxiety rates doubled. We see that uh, the health environment and, and our health system 
has difficulties coping with this. We have a long waiting list of people that need support on their well-being. So this is this is not going away. And this is why I think that as leaders um, and as, as people, we have a responsibility to do what we can mm-hmm. to support uh, this environment that, that we're seeing. And, and also when we look at the young people, um, they are our future yeah. colleagues. Absolutely. And it's our responsibility to make sure that we also address it there at that age and, and help them give the tools to to manage those situations that they that they face. Absolutely, that's why Purti is being such a, a huge success. How can uh, mental well-being uh, be promoted as an in, in, integral part of the, the, the company's strategy? For, for uh, Zurich Portugal specifically, we have, we have four strategic uh, pillars and one of them being people and culture. And, and in that pillar is really how we look at how can we support our own employees, mm-hmm. our colleagues, with making sure that they have the support and the services that, that they need to be able to be at their best at work, but also build a culture through programs like Porti, for example, where we also give back to, to society in the ways that we can. Mm-hmm. And the Porti program is, is one of those ways of really going to schools with this topic for young adults uh, between 12 to 15 in a very important stage of their lives to try to help them manage the situation help uh, professors and, and school staff to see and to, to, to take on these topics when they see them happening, and especially also parents mm-hmm. that you know, ha- suddenly have a, a teenager at home that you see are not where they, where they need to be or where they should be, and how do you address then uh, a teenager that, that tends to be quite mm-hmm. you know, restrictive in the, the, the type of communication they have? At least I have two uh, teenagers at home, and. <laughs> yeah. It is uh, not easy to get a lot of words out of them unless you know what tools to use. Okay, so, and uh, Zurich uh, aims to be a top employer company, absolutely. And, and in recent years, you uh, adopted the hybrid uh, work model, and uh, that would be a very um, a great pillar on the, the well being of the employees. and. I mean, this the office you have here. It's such so so nice. Every episodes of Purti were recorded here. Mm-hmm. We have an amazing headquarters here. It's it's uh, newly transformed. I would really say, um, but it's a piece to the puzzle. And and I think that what is what is important is then what sits within, what sits within uh, our our office within the the four walls that we have, and what is the culture. Uh, that we want to build, what is the, the safe environment that we want to build for our people to make sure that when they come in through this door, it's not just a very nice colors and, and great furniture and, 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 and flexible, uh, you know, flexible ways of, of working, but that it's really also where you feel safe and where it's an environment that, that you feel safe coming to. I think on the hybrid working, it, it should definitely not be underestimated. I'm a, I'm a really strong believer and a very strong supporter of, of hybrid working. And I do that because I've lived the experience. Uh, for me, this was very important when I myself became a mother and my, our, our boys were, were two years old and I got the opportunity to step into an executive role. And been given that flexibility And being able to work from home and from the office was absolutely fundamental for me to be able to balance my family life and and my professional life. So this is something that I many times looked back at and thought if I would not have been given that opportunity, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be sitting uh, where I am today. So hybrid working is is very important, but hybrid working also doesn't mean working 100% from home and 100% from the office. So... It's important to find this balance. But yes, find that flexibility and, and give people the opportunity to manage their work and their life because it's an integrated part uh, of your life. But also make sure that, that colleagues understand that it's not about only working from home and only working from the office. 
Uh, it's about finding that give and take relationship. And I think that there we are still working on finding the right balance even there so that it actually becomes that important added value that it's supposed to be. So we can say that Zurich's commitment uh, to mental well-being is, uh, is about safeguarding the future, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that we are here to, to safeguard uh, not only the colleagues that we have here today, but the colleagues that are going to come and work for us in the future. It's about uh, the customers that we have around us, the partners that we collaborate with. And, and Zurich has been in, in business in Portugal for 106 years. And to be able to safeguard that and, and build a sustainable business for the future, this is a fundamental part of that. And the partnership between EPIS, uh, Universidade Coimbra, and also Z Zurich Foundation, right? Mm -hmm. It's a, you have a few partnerships that uh, are also doing this path. And if I would uh, be able to challenge you to give some advice to those who are watching our Purti podcast to seek a more balanced life, uh, what would you tell them like as a, a wrap for our conversation? It's always very difficult to, to give advice because we all, all live in our own realities and, and, and within our own environment. But what has worked very well for me, and which is something that I'm continuously working on, is one is really self-care. One is to really take care of the body and the mind and the health that, that you have because no one knows you as good as you do. And it's very important to be able to make sure you have a, a balanced diet, that you do exercise, that you get your sleep, that you get the, to do the things that, that makes you laugh, the things that makes you happy, and not feel guilty about actually taking time to take care uh, of yourself. This is, this is something that I, I think is very important. Um, I think also making sure that you have a good network of people around you. It doesn't need to be a hundred people. It can be a handful of people that, that really strengthens you and, and supports you and that fundamentally cares about how you feel and, and how you manage uh, your life. So self-respect, self-love and everything will, will go well, I'm sure. Thank you very much, Helen, for uh, sharing your perspective perspectives with us here today. It was uh, truly an enlightening and inspiring uh, conversation with the CEO of Zurich Portugal, closing our last episode of Purti podcast. Uh, throughout these six episodes of our podcast, we have welcomed psychologists, therapists, school teachers, uh, even youngsters uh, who, who have shown the impact of Purti mental well-being programs in schools in Portugal. So from Zurich uh, office here in Lisbon, uh, where we recorded all the episodes. Uh, see you next time. Uh, it was such a pleasure to be here with you and hope to see from you soon and até a próxima.